Okay, hi everyone. Welcome to the University of Nottingham webinar. Um, my name is Isabella and I work in our student recruitment team. Um, and I will be talking to you very briefly about the university in general. Um, and I'm also joined by one of my colleagues, Professor Roland Travis, um, who is from our Department of Mechanical Materials and Manufacturing Engineering. And he's going to talk to you about studying engineering specifically at the University of Nottingham. Um, I work with students who are applying from Turkey, so I will support students that are applying to study with us at any study level, whether it's bachelor's, master's or PhD. Um, and I travel out to Turkey usually three or four times a year um, when we're not grounded because of coronavirus. Um, and yeah, basically support anyone who is interested in studying at Nottingham. So we'll kick things off with our presentation um, and I'll just talk you through very briefly uh, about the university itself. So Roland, if you don't mind moving the uh, the screen on. There we go. So um, you may have heard of the University of Nottingham already. Um, for those of you who haven't, Nottingham is a very well ranked university. So it's known throughout the world um, as being a very prestigious place to study. Um, we're a member of the Russell Group in the UK, and that's a group of research intensive universities um, who, who focus on research specifically, um, but also have very strong links with industry, employers, um, and lots of our academics are kind of leaders in their field worldwide. So you're learning from kind of the, the best type of people in that, that research area. And as students, you become part of that research community. Um, we are eighth in the UK for our research power. We're a top 25 university in the UK and top 100 in the world. So very, very strong academically. Um, but we also have a gold standard for teaching. And that kind of recognises the quality of how well our professors teach. So they're not just good at research, but they're also good at teaching you what they know, which means you then become good at research too. Um, so it's, it's a great place to, to kind of come and study a degree. So. If we just move on to the next one, there we go. So in terms of our kind of student body, Nottingham is a very, very diverse university to study at. Um, we have a campus uh, here in the UK, um, but we also ha have campuses in Malaysia and China. Um, and across all three campuses, we have almost 48,000 students who study with us. Uh, here at our campuses in Nottingham, we have uh, over 34,000 students. Um, so a really, really huge student body. And we have over 10,000 international students. Um, so it's a very diverse university as well. And we have students that now are based, um, or alumni, sorry, that are based all over the world. So we have graduates that have kind of gone off um, and, and sort of traveled across, across the world, kind of spreading the Nottingham name. So it's a, a global community um, with lots of students um, across all of our campuses. Um, and on this next slide, we'll look at kind of the, the student population in a little bit more detail. Um, so in terms of, of where our students come from and sort of what countries they're, they're based at, um, we have students from over six different continents, over 150 nationalities. So you'll meet students from literally all over the world. From Turkey um, specifically, every year we will have approximately 120 new Turkish students. Um, so it's a really, really big kind of Turkish community as well. Um, and about 5,000 of our students are postgraduate taught students. So it's kind of a really good place to, to come and be a master's student, people from all sorts of backgrounds. Um, it's very varied, um, very multicultural and very welcoming. And that's one of the things I really like about Nottingham. So um, the university itself is actually uh, a campus university, but we're not far from the city centre. So Nottingham it's one of the questions that people tend to ask me uh, the most. Where is Nottingham? Um, they'll often have heard of it, but they're not sure whereabouts it is. Nottingham is a, a great sized city. It's right in the middle of England. Um, one of the benefits being that you can kind of explore everywhere really easily. So London is less than two hours. Manchester is less than two hours. Birmingham is just an hour away. So you can explore lots of the UK really easily. But Nottingham itself is a fantastic city. Um, there's lots of different things going on. It has a real mix of culture, history, shopping, sports. Um, you can walk everywhere in the city centre. So one of the great things is it's extremely affordable, um, particularly for students. Um, but you're also close to some fantastic countryside. So we have the Peak District, Sherwood Forest, both of which are very close to us. 
Um, and Nottingham is well known for being the city of Robin Hood. So you may have heard of Robin Hood before. Um, so it's a, it's a really good city to be a student in right in the middle of England. Um, and the campus itself is just 10 to 15 minutes away um, by bus. So you can get around really, really easily. Okay. So in terms of kind of the university itself, there's lots of other things going on. So you have all of your academics and we'll move on to those, um, that side of thing in a minute um, when Roland will talk to you about engineering specifically. Um, but there's lots of kind of student life to be involved in at Nottingham, um, lots of different sports and, and fitness. Um, so we often have lots of students who come over as student athletes. Um, we have fantastic facilities on campus. We had a 40 million pound investment into our sports centers. Um, so we have everything from kind of your typical gym through to rock climbing, bouldering, an all glass squash court and a martial arts dojo center. So it's a really fantastic facility for our students. Um, obviously, a big part of going to university as well is uh, things like your career. That's one of the main reasons students choose to, to study a, a degree is to improve your career options. Um, Nottingham is a fantastic place to come and develop your career. We're in the top 10 in the UK for employability. Our degrees are recognised and valued across the world. We have some fantastic links with employers. Um, and Professor Travis will tell you a little bit about those employer links as well, I'm sure, with engineering. And these are some of our alumni specifically from engineering. So you can see kind of the quality of, of jobs and, and programmes that, that students go on to, to work in. So we have alumni based in big companies such as Rolls-Royce, Bombardier, Places like Adidas, so slightly different compared to when you're thinking of an engineering kind of specific degree. Um, but we also have some really um, well regarded uh, academics from Turkey specifically um, and uh, graduates who are now working back in Turkey in a range of different careers. So these are the sorts of things that you might be able to go on to do. Um, in terms of, of what you need to actually get into the university for master's programmes, um, typically a GPA of around 2.8 to 3 would be accepted for the majority of our engineering programmes and you would need an IELTS of around 6.5. Um, and I will leave my email in the box um, for questions later on. So if anyone wants to get in touch about anything to do with applications, you're very welcome to contact me. Um, I can see there's a question that's just popped up about what kind of scholarships are provided for master's programmes. Um, we actually have a, a scholarship specifically for students from Turkey um that would go towards your tuition fees and again i will i'll send some links for that at the end of this presentation um but i'll now hand over to roland who'll tell you a little bit more specifically about engineering hello good afternoon good evening it's great to um, be invited to speak to you so thank you very much for your time this afternoon so uh, as my colleague isabella has said i'm in the mechanical engineering department at uh, the university of nottingham and what is engineering? I suspect you all are engineers who are thinking of uh, moving more into an engineering career from what your first uh, first scientific degree or something like that. We do all sorts of engineering at Nottingham and it won't surprise you to see the, the wide range of activities that we get involved in and wide range of careers that, that, that people do after studying for an engineering master's. Architecture is a, a big department at Nottingham and this is our, one of our sites in Nottingham. It's got a lot of new buildings on it and this is one of them. You might be interested to, to walk around the campus. In fact, there's, there's a lot of stuff going on on the campus. Isabella mentioned the sports centre, but if, as you walk around the campus, you'll see an awful lot of activity and new stuff. Um, aeronautics, uh, we have an aeronautics MSc degree uh, for those of you who are particularly uh, interested in that area. Um, one of the options within the mechanical degree is also to specialise in automotive, um, but I've actually put this picture of a car up because it, it's much more interest, uh, linked to my interest. I don't know if you know the Toyota Mirai, but it's actually, it's not got an internal combustion engine in it, it's got a fuel cell engine in it, so it's, it's basically it stores hydrogen, the hydrogen gets converted into electricity, and the electricity drives the motor power of the car so it's it's uh, one of the first commercially available vehicles of this type um, and all of those things are, are available in our engineering department fuel cells um, fuel and chemical engineering um, and automotive specialities um, perhaps you're looking at uh, 
structural engineering or um, civil engineering. So again, we have a department that, that focuses on that. This is a bridge I rather like from the south of France. Of course, there's all sorts of um, electronics, particularly, uh, but also materials involved in things like phones. So what are engineers doing? Engineers basically throughout their careers spend time solving society's problems. Uh, and you know, the engineers that come from Nottingham are no exception. Or possibly, so there's, there's a couple of things involved in this last one here. Um, we have a, a, a food technology um, degree that's a um, MSc that's available. And also there's lots of clever materials and manufacturing um, capability required to, to make something like this. Fine. We've also got a master's degree in uh, additive manufacturing, new methods of manufacturing. So all sorts of practical fields of engineering that we get involved in. Um, I'll just give you a, uh, a couple of thoughts about engineering. So here are some quotes I rather like about engineering. So engineering is all about change. It's all about developing solutions. It's all about improving society. Um, here's a few things that, I, that I've come across in my time. Um, and I, I quite like the, and it's perhaps not strictly engineering, but the Malala use of society uh, quote there on the left, one person with their ideas can change the world. Okay. Um, what I've been involved in throughout my career, I joined the University of Nottingham about a year ago. Before that, I spent 14 years working for Rolls-Royce in uh, leading one of their engineering groups. Um, and I was involved in developing a fuel cell for uh, so, um, a new way of generating electricity in, a, in an efficient manner. So you'll find typically that the academics in Nottingham have got very good links to industry. Uh, as Isabella said, and I obviously am in touch with my former colleagues at Rolls-Royce and elsewhere. So this particular chart just shows that over the last 20 years, huge increase in demand for electricity approximately doubled, and that's largely been driven by the Chinese market. Okay. I rather like this quote at the top. We don't inherit the earth from our ancestors, we borrow it from our children. So when we're done, we have to leave things in a good state for our children. Um, and that's sort of my passion for engineering has been about how can we look after the planet? How can we leave things better for the generation that's to come? How can we, uh, and then in particular with electricity, how can we do that? I'm not really going to go into any detail, um, just to show a few pictures of progress. Of course, th th this is transport. Transport has um, progressed and continues to progress and engineers are involved in all of that. Bottom left, about um, 30, 40 miles from uh, Nottingham, there is a hydrogen fueling station next to the motorway. So hydrogen cars, we're beginning to see them in the UK. And here is uh, progress in terms of where we've gone from and to in terms of cooking and on the bottom there in terms of electrical generation. The bottom right is what I was involved with, with Rolls-Royce and LG, our project of producing electricity um, directly from pipeline natural gas without burning fuel. Okay, so some more details about the University of Nottingham. Oh, sorry, yeah, that, that you might, I took this picture bottom right. This is a building in the center of London. It's referred, its nickname is the Walkie Talkie because of its shape. Um, in the bottom, it has a fuel cell which fun, which fires about 25% ten, between 10 and 25, depending on the time of day, of the electrical power in the building. And we're beginning to see in the UK and in other places around the world um, legislation that's looking to be more environmentally friendly um, and electrical generation in new buildings is one of the areas where that's relevant. So, a bit about the Faculty of Engineering. Um, we have five uh, technical departments in engineering, and they're the first five here. The last one, the foundation engineering, is not relevant to you. That's if, you're, if your schooling doesn't quite meet the entry requirements to go on to a degree to do engineering, then we have a foundation engineering degree. That's not relevant for those of you who are looking for postgraduates. The first, the, the first five lines there are our five departments. And I'm going to give you a little bit of information about each of those departments. So architecture, mechanical engineering, civil engineering, chemical, 
and electrical. Um, you've already had some details about uh, the university itself. Um, great new buildings. And uh, so this is more information about in general. This is the, the campus. Engineering buildings are over here on the right hand side um, between Portland Building and the Queen's Medical Centre. There's a long building here which houses many of our uh, engineering departments and architecture is up on the hill at the back here. Okay, I won't dwell any more on that. Okay, this is the other campus. You can see the red building again here where um, some of our, our newer buildings, some halls of residence and some support services are based. Okay, I'm going to move on to talk about the departments. Uh, you've already heard a little bit about our reputation and where we are. Um, we've got good research. Um, and I think one of the key things about Nottingham is the people who teach you are people who are actively at the forefront of their fields. Uh, and therefore your teaching is relevant. You'll have to do a major project as part of a master's course. And that project is um, research um, linked and it's done with a member of staff who's got uh, a research activity. So it, it's it's a good place to work and lots of new and exciting things come out of the uh, out of the faculty. Many of our courses are accredited so you get a professional recognition from doing your degree um, and in different departments it'll it'll be different ones of these on the left hand side. Um, the Institution of Mechanical Engineers in my department, for example, um, accredits our mechanical engineering degree, and therefore you are well on the way to becoming a chartered engineer at the end of your um, studies at Nottingham. On the right-hand side, some of the uh, people we work with, um, Rolls-Royce, I mentioned that I used to work there, and a number of other companies, many of which you'll have heard of. Okay, so accreditation is good. There's a wide range, as you'll see, of master's programs. Very good on employability, and we also have some opportunities for placement um, during and after your course. Uh, you'll be aware that the visa situation is changing, so much more opportunity than there used to be to find uh, employment for a period of time after your degree has finished in the UK. As I said, excellent academic staff, decent numbers within the faculty, not so large that you'll feel lost, but um, a decent number so you're not the only person doing your course. Um, good postgraduate, we look after our postgraduates well, and uh, yeah, a lot of facilities. Okay. And you'll find that our academics themselves come from a large cross section. Um, about half of them are British, but are also represented right across the world. OK, so what are the courses we offer? Um, so the, this is just a this is a list, really, of the courses that are available um, in, in the different departments. And I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about each department. But you can see the architecture department there at the top, a number of professional qualifications or master's courses. So including REBA qualification, if you've, if you've done a first degree in architecture in Turkey, you might be looking to have a professional REBA qualification. MSCs in chemical and environmental engineering. So notice there that we've got the chemical, the energy process systems, environmental engineering, but also the food process engineering. I'll come back to more details about the departments. Electrical engineering there as well. Um, a number of different options there including the power electronics and drives. Civil engineering, um, straight civil engineering or transportation or structural engineering, um, earth observation and geographical information. Those are research areas that the university is well known for. Mechanical engineering, so you've got manufacturing, uh, materials, aerospace, as I mentioned earlier. Human factors, which means how do people interact with um, equipment? Um, and mechanical engineering is there as well, and bioengineering also option. Okay, so looking at the departments individually, 
Uh, you can see typically on the right hand side a typical learning environment within the architecture department. There's lots of work that requires um, drawing boards, etc., and interesting buildings to work in. And you can see there the different options that are available within the Department of Architecture and Built Environment. Um, I think the, the university is very proud of the sustainable building technology. We actually have uh, three buildings on campus, which are houses where we try out so different building technologies. OK, so it's an architecture built environment, a very good success rate in terms of um, careers. And you know, those creative energy homes I was just mentioning, innovative energy efficient homes where we, we people actually live in them and we try new technologies out. Strong links with industry, strong links with architectural practice, both in Nottingham and wider. We're not very far from London, as Isabella said, and, and so there's lots of links with architectural practice in London as well. Okay, and there's a mention there of in the architecture department what the research strengths would be um, urban design, sustainable energy, for example. Uh, and a number of the academics are well known internationally for their research in these areas. And some typical things that you've got access to there at the, at the bottom from the model making. That's the same is true in many of the departments, but actually a, a degree in engineering is not just a theoretical study, but it's also a practical study. And that comes through in the architecture department and other departments. There's lots of access, for example, in architecture to rapid prototyping. Um, and also, I would say I know that that's also the case in the mechanical engineering department. Department of Chemical and Environmental Engineering. So the course is offered there. You can see very high rankings at the top there. Um, our courses uh, include chemical engineering, which is an accredited, as you can see, by the Institution of Chemical Engineers. Um, environmental engineering, energy process systems. So how do we design processes that use the natural resources to be efficient? Um, and food process engineering, which is now uh, just completing its second year. So it's still a fairly small course, has 20 something people on it this year and is very closely linked to the food processing industry. OK, so some de more details about the chemical and environmental engineering department. So uh, it's a leading center for industrial processes and applications, as you can see there. Um, again, emphasizing the point that the degree you will do is not just a theoretical de degree, but also develops practical skills that you'll need later in your career. Uh, and very close links to industry in the chemical engineering department. And a few details there of some of the facilities that are available. And on the right hand side, you keep seeing pictures here of, of some students and facilities within uh, within their degrees in the department. Within civil engineering, so these are the options that are available within civil engineering. Um, again, accreditation by a number of uh, institutions, as you can see there. So civil engineering, transportation and structural engineering and surveying available to you. Again, good research links with industry, ensuring that what you learn is relevant to the career that you're going to go into or going to continue in. Uh, or individual research projects. So this is true against most, almost all of the engineering courses that are done at master's level. It will be three semesters long is the, is the course. The first two semesters are taught semesters where you are taught master's level um, studies and examined at the end of them uh, on the whole. And then the third semester, which runs during the summer months from about June to early September, is a research project. This is similar in most of the engineering courses that we offer. And you do a research project in the summer with one of the leading academics uh, into generating some new knowledge, some new data, and some analysis of it in, in an area of research. OK. Uh, and some more comments here about civil engineering and the facilities that are available. 
Um, so you can see we've got specialist capability for structural loads, uh, and you can see hydraulics there, um, laser scanning equipment, a number of other uh, things. And at the bottom there, two specialist centres and institutes that are available within, and perhaps your research project would be within one of those if that's your interest. Top right, incidentally, so Nottingham uh, recently uh, had a tram system built. And so the University of Nottingham is right next to three tram stations. Um, so there's good access to the, the university from right across the city. Talking about electronic and electrical engineering. So they very proudly uh, were ranked first in uh, the Guardian last year for, um, for these subjects within the UK. Um, again, some of these degrees are accredited if that's what you need for your career, particularly by the, by the IET. A new option there is a two year uh, extended research um, masters. If you're particularly interested, we've really developed that because of pressure from the Chinese and Indian markets for a longer MSc, um, but that's an option now. Uh, and you can see the options there of the course, the sustainable en energy engineering at the bottom there. Um, includes all different new energy technologies. So for example, some of my fuel cell experience uh, is used to teach on that course. And some comments about the electronic and electrical engineering. Again, globally recognized research. It, we're a world leader in that, in that area. Um, many projects are carried out with other departments because electronic engineering is a backbone that, that's used to uh, underpin and support all different types of applications. Um, some other comments there that, you know, power electronics research groups are some of the largest in the UK. And um, if that's, if you want to go into research or you want to do a project that, that is, um, that you have already have an idea for, that might be important to you. Um, knowledge and skills to again direct what you learn is directly applicable to your career later on and you can see a list there of some of the uh, facilities that are available within the electrical and electronic engineering department and the mechanical department the the last of the five departments this is my department um, you can see the courses listed there additive manufacturing um, which is, which is Again, it's currently in its uh, third year of studies, I believe. So that's a relatively new degree with um, new equipment again and yeah, cutting edge research comes out of there as well. Materials, aerospace technologies. So we've been running an aerospace technologies MSc course for a while and we've just finished graduating our first undergraduates in that area. Bioengineering, so that falls within the mechanical engineering department. Um, as the human factors. Again, accreditation for different um, courses is, is available. And if you go into um, mechanical engineering and do a mechanical engineering degree, we'll ask you or suggest you specialize in one of these four themes that are in yellow at the bottom of the page, um, aerospace, automotive and manufacturing or potential specialities within the mechanical engineering MSc. Okay, again, close links with industry. Myself and many others have worked in industry or worked very closely research-wise with industry. Um, additive manufacturing is one of the, the strengths and um, one of the biggest groups in the world in that area. Uh, so, some and some more notes, including here at the bottom about the facilities that, that are available, including, as you'd expect, wind tunnels, um, specialist manufacturing machines um, and a uh, large capability in computer engineering as well. Okay so that's really for me a brief run round um, the engineering departments and the courses that we offer. Um, as a, Some of you may be there thinking about okay which course is the right one for me and I always say um, what will your MSc help you achieve? So if, for example, you're a mechanical engineer, but you've always wanted to, to be specialised in the automotive sector, and perhaps your, your career path needs you to do that, then choose a, a degree that allows you to specialise in automotive. 
if you're a general chemical engineer and you want to and you've always been passionate about food then that might be a good option to choose um, the food technology MSc. So when you're deciding which university and which course to study, you want to look at, okay, how does this degree help me with the next step of my career? What skills will it give me that I need in my career? What experience will it give me that I need in my career? And what contacts will it give me that I need in my career? You're not just thinking about what's the degree like? What's the degree going to give me that will really help me for my career? Okay, if the Bella, do you want to? Um, I'd just add, so I've, I've just been kind of monitoring the questions as we go through and there's been quite a few questions about kind of how how to apply or, or at what point do you apply? Um, so I'll just talk very briefly about how the actual application process would work for one of our master's courses. Um, so we have an online application system. Um, so you would apply directly online. We have a system called My Nottingham, and it lets you submit your application um, directly to the university. So once you've had a look through and decided which program you're interested in, um, you would be able to kind of follow an online link um, onto this system. You would register with the system. Um, and then essentially, it's quite straightforward from there. You would just upload any kind of relevant documents. So if you've completed your degree, you can upload your degree certificate and transcripts. Um, you would upload a motivational letter about why you're choosing to study that course, um, as well as two references. Um, so you would need two references. One would be academic, so usually from a professor at your university. Um, and then the other, sometimes people will have a work reference if you've done any work experience, um, or it may be another professor, depends on your kind of situation. Um, but you would upload those documents um, and they will ask basic questions as well for personal details, just to fill in kind of your application form. And then that would get sent directly to our admissions team. Now, the, the length of time it takes to get a response can vary. Sometimes it's very, very quick and it's a, a couple of weeks. Other times it takes a little bit longer because they need to look into um, your degree or there's some um, outstanding documents, um, in which case it can take a little, a little bit longer. Um, but they will assess your application directly online um, and they will be able to, to let you know whether they're going to make you an offer. Um, if you haven't yet completed your degree, um, so say you're in your final year and you won't be getting your exam results until the summer, that's absolutely fine. You can still submit your application um, at this point. Um, most of our students, if they apply for a master's course, would not yet have finished their, their bachelor's degree. Um, and as soon as you get your results, you can send those in. Um, you may have already had an offer. It would be what we call a conditional offer. Uh, so it's based upon you achieving certain grades in your final exams. So once you get those results, you would just send those in and we would match those up with your application. Um, but you can apply any point from now through till August, as long as the courses don't close before then. Um, our application system actually opens sort of October time, September, October. Um, so students will apply all throughout the year, but typically students in Turkey who are looking for master's programs, usually between sort of February, March through to May is kind of common for, for students in Turkey to be applying. Um, I mentioned very briefly about IELTS requirements. We do accept other qualifications as well, um, including TOEFL, um, Cambridge English, um, some of you may have taken the IB at school, for example, in which case we would accept IB English. Um, so there's a lot of different English language qualifications you can take. Um, I can let people know if there's anything that you would like to know in particular. Um, my email address is hopefully in the sort of registered people, so you should be able to see my email. Um, and you're very welcome to, to get in touch with me if you want to know any kind of specifics about how to apply. If anyone has any questions, feel free to, to type them in the question box. We're happy to go through them. Um, but like I say, you can get in touch with us directly if you would prefer to, to ask a question to us over email as well. We'll just give it a few minutes and see if anyone has any questions. Um, if not, we're, we're happy to, for you to email us and we can leave our email addresses in the question box or the chat box. Um, I will be back out in Turkey, hopefully. Um, in June um, 
but if not it will definitely be in the autumn um, and I'm always happy to meet with students while I'm out there so it's always advertised on our website when I'm traveling to Turkey um, and people are very welcome to get in touch with me to arrange appointments to, to come and have a chat. Um, Isabella there's uh, some questions on the questions tab. Yes so here we go oh, there's a few couple coming in perfect okay so i can see this one i'll just start this one as a live um so one says are there any changes with deadlines because of the covid19 situation um so the university is assessing um the the situation it's it's kind of monitoring as we're we're going through um any updates that are released um the university is aware of and we're we're kind of monitoring and we'll update students as and when decisions have been made. So we're aware for lots of students across the world that things like exams have been cancelled um, and you may not be able to take English language exams, but the university is, is aware that that is the situation for a large number of students and they are working through um, various options um, and will be in touch directly with, with any applicants or offer holders um, as and when they have some information for you. Um, we have some really good web pages um, about COVID-19, particularly for students who have applied. Um, and this is a really good place to start. Um, so you can you can go onto our website and you'll see that there's a whole um, web page for kind of frequently asked questions, um, whether you're a current student or you're, you're hoping to study with us in September, and that's where we'll do all of our, our updates. Okay. Um, Another question about when are the deadlines for undergraduate applicants? Um, so you will normally have until uh, the beginning of June um, to submit your application um, as long as the course remains open. So at the moment, most of our undergraduate engineering courses are still available. Um, the scholarship amounts written on the website are per year rather than monthly. So that would be the amount that comes off your tuition fee for the year. Um, and then I think there's a couple of more engineering specific questions that I'll let you take, Roland. One is about aerospace engineering for MSc. Oh, actually, I can answer this one. Do you have it for undergraduate? Yes, we have an undergraduate degree in aerospace engineering as well. It's either a three year course leading to a bachelor's or a four year course leading to a master's, whichever it is yeah. you want to study. And we just have a look at our, if you have a look at the University of Nottingham website, we've recently published some videos there about students' experience on the aerospace course because it's a fairly new course. We're finding that the number of applications is getting more and more each year because the reputation for people thinking the course is good and relevant um, is a very healthy reputation at the moment. And there's another question that's just come in, which I think is probably more for you, Roland, about which programs do we teach in 3D modelling? I don't know whether you can see that question in the questions tab. Uh, I haven't seen that one. Maybe. Is it at the top or the bottom? At the top on mine. OK, there we go. Uh, which courses do you teach in 3D modelling? OK, so I recognise, or oh, which programmes? So I recognise um, Rhino, AutoCAD and SOLIDWORKS, we do almost all the, um, so many courses require 3D modelling. Uh, in my department of mechanical engineering, lots of students use SOLIDWORKS a lot of the time. Um, and Rhino is used particularly for those who are doing industrial design based projects. Um, there's a whole lot of other tools available for those doing industrial projects for rendering, for getting uh, so there's key shot, there's Photoshop and other things as well, which, which give um, really professional like images. So particularly undergraduate level, we have an industrial design course in, in mechanical engineering, which is, is very popular and um, requires an even higher level of um, skill in, in three dimensional modeling. But most students are introduced to SOLIDWORKS during the course of their degree quite early on and Rhino is available as required. Okay. So, don't think I can see any other questions at the moment. Um, feel free if you've got anything that you'd like to know, um, either about the university generally or about anything within engineering. Um, any other questions as well, I'm happy to, to try and, and answer if there's any other courses that you might want to know about. 
Um, if not, we will leave our emails in the chat box. Um, and thank you very much for, for coming to listen. It's been useful for you. For master, oh, here's a question. There we go. Um, so for master's programs, how much does it cost? So this will depend on the program that you study. Um, our website will list exactly what fees um, are per course. But as an example, um, most master's courses would be around the, the sort of 23,000 um, sort of mark. Um, that would be a typical kind of cost for a master's in engineering. Um, if you're looking at an undergraduate course, it could be anywhere from 18,000 through to 21,000, 22,000. Um, so again, it will vary on, on program, but typically for masters around 23,000 pounds a year. Okay. Okay. I think that there's one more question here. Can you go into more detail about the social life in university so this is probably one of the the best parts about university in the uk aside from having excellent academics um the social side of, of life at university is brilliant so at nottingham um, we have over 300 different student societies and that is literally everything from sports and music through to um cultural societies faith societies we have um, societies where you can go out walking at the weekend. We even have a dog walking society. So there's lots of different things that you can get involved in, depending on what you're interested in. Um, the university arranges lots of different day trips as well, um, particularly to kind of countryside nearby. Um, you can join the travel society, but we also have an international society as well who organise lots of different events for students. Um, so to, to kind of summarise, whatever you're interested in, there's usually something to, to kind of suit that um, and you can get involved in as much or, and as little uh, as you want to be involved in. Yeah, and many of our students live very close to campus, so they live very close to their friends and other students as well. Um, there's accommodation actually on the university campus and there's lots of accommodation very close to the university campus within the city. Uh, so I'd also say that, you know, I, I go in the mornings to the sports centre. It's a it's yep. really cutting edge equipment there. Um, was, was it 25 million pounds that was spent on it? Um, 40 million. And also I walk past every day um, a theatre where there's a capability yep. of doing music and theatre there. So there's those kind of sides as well, which are um, alive and well within Nottingham University. Okay, so I think we'll leave it there. We've only got a couple of minutes left um, and I can't see any new questions. Um, but yeah, thank you for, for listening. Like I say, if there's anything you'd like to get in touch with us directly for, you should be able to find our details um, either here in this chat or you can usually Google us and we will pop up on, on Google um, under the University of Nottingham. Um, but we can type our email addresses into the chat box before we finish. So I'll just put that in there now um for me anyway um and i can always direct anything through to, uh, to roland um yeah or if if, need be. to be honest if you had a detailed question about the architecture course for example we'd send it over to a colleague in architecture who would be able to give you an informed answer rather than uh, <laughs> like ourselves. yeah exactly but yeah feel free to to contact me and i can put you in touch with the right people but thank you very yeah. much for coming to listen um and have a, a great day yeah, it's great spending some time with you and um, being invited to speak. So thank you very much for your time this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, Isabella and Roland. Uh, it was really beneficial and I hope that uh, people will contact you afterwards uh, personally. Perfect. Thank you. Great. Have a good right. day. You too. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye.